So, guys, let me know um, if you can hear all of us and see us okay. I'm talking to the audience now. I know Julius and Sox, she can hear and see. So how's everybody going? We got Donna. We have Alexis from New York. Uh, let's see. Yes, Saeed, you can. Hi, we can hear and see. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got very some very special guests here today, Julius and Sakshi. You've seen and heard Sakshi before. So first, we want to say thank you very much, Julius, for uh, for taking the time out of your your day to join us and to share with us your story and to answer some questions. So thank you, Julius. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on here. Very good, very good. So I'm going to have Sakshi. Sakshi's just going to ask you a few questions. Sakshi, do you have those questions there? Yes, I do. Okay, good. So before you start, if you guys um, who are listening or watching out there have questions, feel free to type those into the chat box and we'll try to get to them uh, throughout this particular session. Okay, so thank everyone for, um, for being here with us and we hope that this will be inspiring, encouraging, and also informative. So... Sakshi, go ahead and, and let's get started. Sure. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks all for joining today. Um, Julius, so my first question to you is, why did you choose Pro90D? All right. Well, all right. So I chose Pro90D because of the habit-changing approach that it contained it was about so the program is about changing a habit replacing not fixing a disfluent way of speaking and a disfluent way of thinking okay so when i saw that i said okay because for years i wanted to fix my dis fix it or try to optimize it but when I saw this Pro 90 Day system, it was talking about changing the habit, focusing on becoming an excellent speaker, the greatest speaker you can possibly become. So I said to myself, all right, well, this is something that I've really seen and that no one really talks about or portrayed in whatever program or therapy that I've come across. So I read more and more, and I just got sold to the fact that you are aiming to become the greatest speaker you can possibly be. Instead of aiming to become a normal speaker, you know, instead of aiming to become a normal standard speaker, you are going above and beyond it and becoming a superior speaker. So that, that's the thing that sold me to it. And so that's why I chose it. I say, you know what? This is a program where you're not just trying to become normal, day-to-day -day average person. You're trying to become the best speaker anybody has ever seen. So I knew, though, that's going to take effort. But when you focus on something greater than just the density and trying to fix it, I feel like that this fluency over time just slips away into oblivion, you just forget about it because you're focusing on something way greater than just fixing it. Now, that's why I chose it. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So it's basically a complete 180 degree transformation. We are not just, just going an inch further, but we're actually going miles ahead. So thanks for, for that. And uh, next, I'd like to ask you, why did you choose private coaching? Like, what was it that uh, you felt was better uh, about the coaching? Oh, why did I choose private coaching? So, 
So I chose private because I myself oh, that I needed help. And I know myself good enough to where I know that if I'm trying to um, do something or achieve something in life, I know whether or not I need that extra help, that teacher, that coach, that mentor. There's many things in my life in the past where I was achieving that I needed a mentor. And this, this flu, I knew right off the bat, this is one of those things where I needed a coach. Because I can, I can do the self-study or even the whole thing by myself if I wanted to. But I know myself and I had this, this fluency for as long as I could remember, ever since the third grade, as ever since I was a child. So I knew if I'm going to do this, I just need that extra voice for support, you know, for positive feedback, you know, just that encouragement, you know, to pick me up. You know, so, and I do this thing and then be that much faster, that much beneficial for me to get to where I wanted to go, you know, because just like everyone else, I have bad days, bad weeks, even bad months with my speech, you know, so I just think it's way more beneficial to have a coach who knows the program, who made the program. It's he designed the program, so why don't I just do the program, him, side by side, go through it together. And the most important thing here is you don't know, you don't believe in a program until you do it. Because when I started this Pro 90 Day system, I didn't really believe in it. I didn't because I don't have anything to go based on that would tell me, yeah, you know, I believe in this. So, so the only way to really believe in it is to do it. And I remember the first few meetings I had with Mr. Williams, I would constantly say, you know, sir, um, I'm trying to believe in this, but uh, it's really hard and I don't have the belief yet. I think it's working. Maybe it's working. If I didn't have him there with me, I'm going to be in a room by myself saying these things to myself and not having someone there saying, hey, it's okay if you think like this. It's okay this is going on. It's supposed to keep going. So that's why I chose the private coaching. Got it. Got it. I'm Sakshi. Let me um, jump in with a, with a question from someone that, that we can all answer. I'm going to post it up here. Uh, so someone says, how can I cure stammering doing, during this lockdown period? Please give me some effective methods and tips. So he's using some very common language, cure stuttering. Please give me some effective methods and tips. So I'd like for you guys, based on, on your own experience and what you know about how this journey generally works for people, uh, how would you res respond to him to the question itself? How how can I cure stammering? And this is for either one of you. Yeah, so maybe I can uh, go ahead and try and answer that. Um, well, I think first, when I look at these words, I just feel like that's how I used to think. I used to think that stuttering or stammering is something it's it's an illness or something within me that I cannot change at all so I need to cure it but it's actually just a way or a style of speaking and it's a habit like we've all been talking about which can be changed so we don't need to cure it but we can change it right because it's a style of speaking and it's something that we have developed over our lifetime so just like we learn a new skill, we learn to speak smoothly in the same way. So I would like to say that. And uh, join Pro 90D. <laughs> That's the <laughs> most useful way like to really transform your speech. So that's all I have to say about it. So Julius, what would you, what would you say 
or how would you address this question? How can I cure stammering? First and foremost, I definitely agree with everything that Sakshi said. And the first thing I would start off with is removing the words cure and stuttering. Get those out of your vocabulary. Get stuttering, stammering, blocking, anything negative out of your vocabulary, out of mindset. Okay. If anything, just use I get stuck or I have sticky points. Because the goal here. Okay, the first thing we got to do is change the way we think about this thing. Okay, we have to change the mindset completely. We have to go the other direction and completely delete words that are associated with that negative di disfluency. Okay, that's the first thing. All right, and, and only then we move forward. To not break or becoming better speakers, excellent speakers that anybody has ever seen. Your aim is to become a speaker that you just blow everybody away. That's the goal, not to cure the stuttering. It's to, okay, how can I become the greatest speaker I could possibly be right now? And during uh, this lockdown, you know, if you do choose to do either the self-study or the private coaching you do be proactive with it you know, proactive that means you have to speak more practice more during the lockdown i mean i did have a job and i spoke at that job but when i was at home i really didn't have time to, i mean not time but how could i practice i just called telephoned everybody i could possibly get in contact with and just make a conversation about anything. It doesn't matter how random it is. I don't care. I'm just going to practice all telephone. Use the telephone constantly. You know? So that's what I did. And I would just go outside. If I saw a neighbor outside, I would just ask a question about their house or their garden or something. Spark up any conversation. doesn't matter what it's about. So there are ways during this lockdown to practice. And also, if you do join this community, there's a, there's a group, there's a community in this Pro90 Day where everyone joins together every day to practice. Everyone takes turns, giving short presentations, and everyone gets good feedback. So there's ways to doing it during this lockdown. Exactly. Um, so thank you, Julius. So a couple of things that Julius and Sakshi said. Number one, changing, shifting your perspective, your focus away from what is a negative goal or something that you're trying to stop or get rid of or cure. That's a traditional mindset. And while I'm sure that there are people that have had that mindset that have been able to overcome it, of course, but generally speaking, it's not going to be very helpful for you to focus on how can I cure? How can I get rid of this? How can I stop? Right. It's going to be more helpful for you to think about how can I start or how can I become, how can I become an excellent speaker? So you're focusing on how you want to speak, how you want to feel, how you want to think rather than, how can I not feel or stop doing something or not speak like this? That generally doesn't work. And then Julius also talked about being proactive. So rather than avoiding and running away from things, he ran towards them. He embraced them, making phone calls and stuff. Now, here's the key. He didn't just keep doing these things, speaking the same way and thinking the same way he used to. He got into a system and a process that taught him how to think different and speak differently. And then he took that and applied it and used it in his everyday speech proactively. He went out and actually sought and created opportunities to use what he was learning. So it's, it's very important. Like when we'll give you some tips and things like that, but the truth is that's not really what's going to help you long term. Tips and tricks and techniques, even, 
is not going to help you the most long term. It's an entire system. We've got it dialed in. It's scientific. It works. It just works. And Julius is here. If some of you haven't seen his video, I have a before and after video. It's on YouTube. It's on my website. And you can see where he was just a couple of months ago. And you can see him after. And you can see him now because he's actually talking to you, right? So it's not like he just practiced, 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 and then recorded this after video. He's conversing with you right now. And you can go look at how he spoke a couple of months ago. And just because you might only see one of those videos, I have hundreds and hundreds of clients. Not all of them are willing to show their before. Right. So that's the reason you don't see all these befores because not everyone is willing to show it. But we have lots of transformations just like Julius. But he was so kind to share with us where he was before and where he was, is now. So we're going to um, ask Julius another question. Then we're going to take a couple more questions from the audience because there's several out there. So Sakshi, go ahead. What's the next question we have for Julius? Yes, it's um, what did you want to fix? Like, was there something in your mind when you had joined Pro 90D that you wanted to fix? Thank you. Um, what I wanted to fix was the this fluent way I was speaking and thinking. I would constantly have this negative approach to my speech every time I thought of talking, speaking, every time I saw the word presentation or when I'm in some class or meeting and the, someone says, okay, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'm like, I always had this, this negative attachment to talking. And like I said, ever since the third grade, years gone by, nothing has changed, the same negative mindset, the same way I spoke. And I'm 29 years old, turning 30. I was just fed up with it. I was fed up with it, and I knew this was the time to do something. If not now, then when, you know? And I did come, I approached this with this whole, I need to fix it, fix it thing, fix it mindset. But like I said earlier, this Pro 90 Day system tells you, all right, we're not fixing anything. We are replacing it. And I was just sold on that. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. And it talks about replacing that, that thing that I'm fixed. So instead of fixing them, we're going to replace it. You know, so those were the two things I wanted to fix. But now those are the things I want to replace. My old ways of thinking and old ways of to new ways of thinking and a new speech style that is more positive, you know, and it just, it will take me to the place where I want to be. And that is fluent and automatic. You know, I don't want to be a slave to stuttering. I don't want to be a slave to the mind. I don't want to do that. That's not the willing to live. So why? Well, those are the things I wanted to fix. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I could really relate to it because those were the reasons that I joined too. I was really frustrated by not being able to say what I wanted to say and when I wanted to say it. So, yeah, I joined exactly for the same reasons. Uh, my next question to you is, what uh, insights can you share with the people who are joining us today uh, about your journey that you've had with Pro 90 d Uh, uh, during it, insights. Okay, uh, let's see. This really takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Okay, this is not easy. Realistically, nothing, nothing that you want to achieve is easy anyway. Nothing, anything you want. To any success that you you have to through the mud, you have to crawl through the mud. It's it's the only way to get to paradise. And so going through it, there were many days, many moments, even weeks where I was just 
I thought I had I was making no progress. I was not really utilizing what I was learning. It wasn't clicking. And I felt like, uh, you know, it was just not working. But those are the moments where you have to dig deep, hold on to hope. Even though you don't even feel it, you just have to, like, just blind faith, hold on to it. Just tell yourself one day it's going to click, it's going to work. You have to persevere through it. You know, you have to be relentless and stuff like this. You know, doing things that are life changing, you have to be relentless. You have to be hungry for it. You have to not quit. You cannot quit under any circumstances. So, those are my insights. It's this is not going to be a walk in the park, uh, you know, because you're changing a habit, something that has been embedded into your mind, into your brain for so long. And the mind is going to fight it constantly. 100%, 24% experience with this thing is that it's a constant battle. And it still is. Because the moments leading up to this webinar, yeah, my mind was trying to tell me, hey, uh, you can just, you know, uh, you probably can't. You're probably going to, uh, you know, stammer, stutter. And these are the moments. That even two months in, even if it's a year in, I still might have these thoughts. But it's these moments where I tell myself, I fight back my mind because I've never used to do that before. You know, I came into this webinar nervous, but I was excited. And I was changing my mindset right before entering it. And now I'm sitting down and I've conquered my mind where I used to never do that. My instincts. Be relentless, be perseverant through all opposition when you're doing this. Be hungry, be fierce about it, you know, never quit, just keep going. If you stick to a program, it's going to work. Just stick to it, but as long as it, whatever the outcome, as long as you put 110% in it, you know, you are a success, you know, if you do that. So... Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. I just want to affirm a few things that you said. Thank you, Julius. Um, this is something that it's not going to be easy to say the least. However, it's much easier to do this for a few months or six months, even if it took you a year, it doesn't matter. It's much easier to do this and have the rest of your life where you're free, right? It's much easier to do this, as difficult as it is, than to live a life enslaved and trapped by your speech. So uh, I hear people all the time saying, wow, I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. Well, yes, because as you've heard me say, you're literally, I mean, literally, I'm using that word <laughs> not just as an expression, but you're literally rewiring your brain. Like you're changing the structure of different parts of your brain that manage the way you think, the way you feel, the way you speak. You're, you're literally forming new connections that's going to help you think and speak differently. And so because you're doing that, you're going to feel resistance. You're going to feel frustrated. You're going to want to give up. You're going to try to talk yourself out of it. You must feel that way for a period of time. But as Julius said, and as Sakshi has said before, you stick in there and you allow that rewiring to take place and you're going to reach a point where it clicks, where it just clicks. Now, none of our speech is perfect. All of us still get stuck from time to time, but our whole mindset is different. We recover differently. We think about it differently. Sometimes we don't even notice it. So it's very important that you plug yourself into something that works. That's not just about techniques, tips, and tricks. This is holistic. Uh, I like to summarize it by saying we help you by helping you create a confident mindset and speaking identity, who you see yourself as and a smooth, clear speaking style. 
So we help you on both of those things. So it's not just one or the other. Uh, so, so thank you, Julius. Um, we've got some questions that I'm just going to pop up here so we can all answer them. Here's one. Let's just go back here a little bit. Uh, all right. I think this is it here. Nope, that's not the one. There's, I do want to address that, but there's another one in here. Um, give me just a second, guys. Let's find this other one. Okay, we already saw that one. This one. Okay, maybe it is this one that's up next. All right, so I've been doing your seven steps course. The seven steps course is a mini course. The seven steps is one of the courses inside the entire Pro90 speech system. So just keep that in mind. It's not everything. It's one thing. But it's a good course. It's an excellent course. So we've been doing it for three months. It has benefited you a lot. I'm doing everything in the course except modeling that I actually tried but not able to do it perfectly. Sakshi, let me swing this one over to you. Say a little bit about modeling and some of the challenges that people have modeling and maybe give us one or two things that you did to help you overcome the chance. So what is modeling briefly? What's the benefits, problems that people have and how you overcame it? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, modeling is basically when you mimic someone. In this case, uh, I mimic Michael. So I used to watch his videos and I used to try and copy him the way he speaks uh, and uh, just the style and using the hands. And uh, I think Julius is also doing that right now really well. And um, yeah, so that's how you model. And um, if you join the program, you'll find out more about it. There are videos on it on how to model, how to start modeling and how to continue it. So uh, I would recommend that you join the course to be able to find out more about this. Uh, but in sum, it's just about mimicking so and practicing it as well. But it also requires a lot of guidance, like from people around you and stuff like that. And the practice group will be really helpful. We actually have a private WhatsApp group where people post videos of, of themselves modeling. and other people give feedback. So that's really helpful in uh, practicing modeling. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Julius to uh, give us his thoughts on, on just how he how he modeled, because I, I watched him do it. Uh, but first, I just want to throw this in. Uh, there's lots of groups out there for stuttering, stammering support. I've been in a couple. There's lots and lots of groups out there. And the difference, based on what my students have told me, the difference between what we do and what they do is um, people will post videos, they'll have table topics, they'll give, they'll throw in a thousand different tips, many of which are great. What's the difference between those groups and Pro90D? Well, one of the differences Julius mentioned earlier, our goal is not to help you stop stuttering. Our goal is to help you become an excellent speaker. So that sets it apart right there. So if you're professionally minded, and you want to go to the next level, you don't just want to not stutter, then this is the program for you. Number two, we have a proven systematic process. It's got a scientific basis, but not only that, we have all these people who are going through it and have gone through it that show that it actually works. doesn't matter if you're super severe or so mild that people can't even tell, it works. So, when you join the group or the coaching, which you could, you become a part of the group too, you're getting feedback from people who are on the same page as you. We're not just throwing in a lot of disparate pieces and information. It's all one system. So when they give you feedback, it's based on the system, right? That's a huge difference because you know that you're on track. You can also see people. I just watched a video from a guy from Pakistan. And he's just an amazing speaker now. You can see where he's, you know, where he's come from. You can see all the people's, wow, this really does work. Okay. So, Julius, say something about um, modeling. And I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to add to what I just said. Of course, Michael. It is an excellent question. 
and I agree with everything that Sakshi said. And uh, basically, modeling is that new fluent identity that you want to replace in your mind. Okay, see, like that's the goal when we say to replace or replace the mindset that this fluent identity. Okay, what do we replace it with? With the model that you want to speak like, you know, my model is Michael Williams. Even before I even did this program, I would watch his YouTube videos sporadically and say, man, I wish he spoke like him. It would be, you know, he speaks really nice. He speaks really soft. He's very fluent. You know, it'd be nice to speak like him. So even before that, I already had a hint of modeling because I had uh, a speech goal that I wanted to hit, but I never really did it back then. But now I am really focusing on modeling him, studying how he speaks, studying moves, his, his facial expressions, the way he flex, just the way he speaks, and practicing that every single day, bodying him, you know, literally acting exactly like my model, you know, because he says he says something really important in this uh, program is where when you are trying to become, you know, a classical pianist, you watch professional classical pianists play and you absorb what they do and you strive to be at that level. So they are your model. You know, you practice like your model to become that professional model that you strive to be. So that this is the way to transform that old identity into a brand new one. You want someone you want to be exactly like, but eventually you're going to create your own way, you know, through that modeling. You know, you're not going to speak and act like him forever, but you do it temporarily to make your own, your own style, you know, your own speech style and your own ways of being fluent. So modeling is key to this whole thing. It's the holistic approach to it. Exactly. So one of the things that I knew that Julius did, because uh, he showed me his chart, <laughs> I think you have a chart or a board or something where you jotted down all of your activities and that you lifted it right out of our daily routine. So Pro90D has a daily routine, which is designed to help you change your mindset, replace your mindset, replace your speaking identity, change your speaking style. Julius took it, jotted it down, modified it a little bit to adjust to him and his schedule. And he, he diligently followed his schedule and he immersed himself. You're going to hear us talk about immersion. So he immersed himself, listening to audio, watching video, self-talk, practicing. So if you want to transform your speech, You've got to immerse yourself. And like Julie said earlier, sometimes if you're working by yourself, this can be so challenging that you just simply, you give up or you get distracted or you get discouraged. Like he said, if I were by myself telling myself all this stuff, I don't think he said this, but he probably would have quit. Like a lot of people do if you're by yourself. But if you're in, if you're at least in the community, that's gonna help. And if you're doing the coaching, We've seen that that accelerates your time by more than 10 times. So in two months, Julius has, has gotten to a place where on his own, watching videos, he did that for months, if not years, right? But in two months, look at where he's gotten. And this is very typical. So I think we just answered this other question. Julius, I just saw your video. Transformational, share with us what you did to carry out modeling. So you just mentioned what you did. All of this is in the program. It's in the program. You just have to do it, right? So, Sakshi, did you have anything else to add, or or did we want to go on to some other questions? No, uh, I was just thinking of something like um, this program is just like going to the gym. So if you want to get in shape, you have to keep working out. So, <laughs> you know, uh, you have to keep doing it every day, and that's when you see results. So it's just like going to the gym. Exactly. 
it's, it's no different. It's, I mean, it's different, but it's not different. <laughs> you're, you're, you're building, you're growing your body. Same thing. Your brain is a part of your body. You're strengthening it. You're growing it. Julius knows because he works out a lot, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so he's really familiar with this. <laughs> um, so there's another question here. Okay. So I have a question. Is it possible that I stutter less in pressure situations than in relaxed situations? Absolutely. That's so very common. Um, very, very common. Even for people who don't stutter or stammer, when they're in high pressure sometimes, sometimes they actually will start to stutter or stammer, even though they don't normally. But when the pressure is on, they'll start stumbling through their speech. They'll get cloudy. So this is very normal. Julius talked about this. He said, leading up to this live stream slash webinar, he started to feel anxious and nervous, but he wanted to challenge himself. Very normal. So he talked to himself. He changed his mental narrative. He changed the narrative. He changed what he thought. Prior to this, he probably just let his thoughts be whatever they were. Take them. I call them trains of thinking. They take him wherever they would take him. Now he's in control. He's the conductor. He's the driver. He may have those thoughts and feelings, but now he can replace them with new ones, right? And he knows how to do that and what to tell himself. So that's very common, but you can do something about it. And it has, largely it has to do with what you tell yourself on a regular basis. You can't just say it once or twice and think that it's going to work. You have to keep telling yourself. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is about experiences. Uh, the more successful speaking experiences you have, the more your brain has those memories to go back on and say, oh, wow, when we're under pressure, we handle it very well. We speak smoothly. Oh, when I'm on the phone, I can answer the phone. I can say my name. And how do you build those experiences? Well, modeling is one way because when you step outside yourself and you become someone else temporarily, you will speak better, right? When you do these practices, you're going to speak better. And then you go out and you apply what you're learning. You're actually creating successful speaking experiences that your brain can then go back on and say, aha, we did do it, right? So I just wanted to mention that. If you guys have anything else to, to say about this, feel free to go ahead and jump in. I want to add something to that as well, Michael. Um, so leading up to this webinar, I did feel you know, those, those nerves and just anticipating, you know, some thoughts were negative, trying to creep in. But let's say I did the right things. I said all the positive things I needed to say and go into this thing with confidence and clarity. Let's say during this webinar, I have no control and I'm stammering and I'm stuttering. And then now I've, I'm just, now I lost it. Let's say that happened. After the webinar, I take it, I assess it, I tell myself it's still a success because I went in there with a positive mindset, unlike I used to do. So it's still a success and I keep going forward. I persevere. I do not let that stop me, let me quit, put me down. It's part of it. It would be part of the process. Okay, you know, so failure is expected. It's, it's going to happen. And if it happens, you have to brush it off. You have to keep going. Okay, so that's another thing where it's very vital. That's why I said with the insight, persevere through it, be relentless, you know, never give up. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Julius. Um, one of our favorite people who, who joins us all the time, she joins our webinars and live streams is, is Pooja. And she also helps to keep every, everyone straight. <laughs> When it's, when it's distractors, you better look out for Pooja because she's going to get you straight. So I'm sure that she's laughing about this right now. But she has a question or two in here that we've kind of already covered. Uh, what's your daily routine and what's your mindset throughout the day? So I want to combine that question with another really good one about uh, changing your thinking. So I'm going to combine these two. But so the, the daily routine is inside the program, right? It's, it says daily routine and it has, and it's a checklist, 
and it says do this do this do this and do that so if you want to get that daily routine then what do you need to do you have to get into the program right get into the program because it's not just having the checklist but it's having the content that will teach you how to use and how to do all those things on the checklist. So we could give you the checklist, but if you don't have, for example, the audio to listen to and the video to watch, which is in the program, then that major part of changing your mindset, that is washing your mind with different information, with something that's new, something that's fresh, something that's inspiring, something that's instructional. Julius and Zotsakshi, the Sakshi doesn't, probably do it as much now, but immersing yourself in the content. In fact, I just had a client yesterday, young guy. He said, you know what? I haven't really, I haven't really been listening to the audio as much as I should. I just thought, well, that's probably not that important. I'm just going to do the other stuff. And he found his mindset and his attitude up and down, up and down. And he said, you know what? Instead of when I'm doing something, listening to music, I'm going to start listening to the audio, just like you told me. And now he says, oh my God, my mindset is so much different. I'm so much more confident. Well, that's a part of the system. It's a part of the daily routine is listening to these specifically designed audios, right? I've designed them to specifically target certain thought patterns, certain ways of thinking. So the more you listen to them, the more it start, it helps to change your mindset. So the answer to your question, the daily routine, it's in the program. You really need to get into it to get that daily routine. Now, the mindset part, I want to com combine that with this question here and have Julius address this. So over the past two to three months, months, what single change in your thinking or technique really made things click for you? Is what so the question is on the screen right now? Is that yeah. the question you want me to answer? Yes. Over the past two to three months, what single change, if there was one, if you could find one or two, in your thinking or technique, something that you changed in your thinking or something that you changed what you did that really made it click? It's like, aha, bam, now it's really starting to work. The, in regards to thinking is visualizing myself succeed, visualizing the best case scenario that could possibly happen. That's the one thing I really try to do more and more is visualize successes. You know, if I know I got to go into a speaking situation, I try to immediately think about it, think about self speaking smoothly speaking fluently and i can see myself enjoying it you know just like this webinar i visualized myself sitting down with you guys and i am enjoying it and i feel myself enjoying it and i can see myself speaking smoothly and so forth so with the mindset really visualizing positive outcomes because let's face it my I think all of us i think we all can relate to always thinking about the negative our minds always shift to the worst case scenario. So that's the one thing I really have changed and I'm still changing it. You know, it's a constant, it's a constant thing. You have to renew. It's a belief and a practice you have to do every single day. Now with my speech, I have tools. I have tools and skills that I use based on the pro 90 day system that it teaches to really transform or to really improve the way you speak, you know? Because back then I really just spoke. I didn't really have any skills or tools to fall back on, to utilize, to help me through. I just spoke and whatever happened, happened. I wasn't really proactive. I was reactive to my speech. But the tools and the skills that the program gives you, you're being more proactive with your speech. You are more co, um, what's the word, conscious, doing what when you so you are in control Those two, i was never in control and it happened, happened it is what it is you know i'm a stutterer oh well now it's okay 
I'm a fluent speaker. I got the tools. I got the right mindset. Let's get proactive and get in control. So I hope that answered uh, your question. <laughs> okay. Now, Sakshi, let's uh, slip this question over to you. So even though it won't be over the last two to three months, but uh, was there a change in, in your thinking and or a technique or a skill that you use that made it all click for you? Yeah, for me, I'm thinking of just the mindset, actually. Um, just having that hope, or even if uh, there are times when I get stuck, it's like the hope really keeps me going, that I can transform my speech. So it's the hope that changed everything for me. Yeah. I remember the last time you said, and we were talking about this, and I've been really, th and I've been thinking about this, and I'm going to do something around this word hope. Yes. That and it's hope, belief, faith. If you have just enough to get started, some people have a lot. Dr. Ismail, Dr. Ismail, brilliant guy, one of the best in the world, fetal surgeon, a professor. He looked at the program and said, based on the science of what this program is saying, I know this is going to work. So he was like 99%. <laughs> And he walked in with hope and faith and belief was nine. Other people, it's really, really low. They're just like, I'm not sure, but I have enough faith to get started. Like the faith the side of a of the size of a mustard seed. Just enough to get me started to walk on that water. Right. And then once you get out there and you actually you trust the process and you start to see results and you see other people, wow, if what they can do it, then I can do it and you follow the system, you start experiencing results for yourself, and then that motivates you and your hope and your faith and your confidence and your belief actually grows. So uh, we're doing this because we wanna give you hope for those of you watching this, whenever you might be watching it, uh, if you're out there struggling and you wanna make a change, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't wanna say confusing, it used to be surprising, but I guess I'm surprised that there are people out there who actually want to remain stutterers. They, they just want to stay who, because it's their identity, right? So they don't, they're like, well, I don't want to change my speaking identity. I just want to be able to speak smoother. So they actually, I've been kicked out of groups before. Like literally just, I'm not even selling anything. I'm just giving, and they've kicked me out because they just want to stay the way that they are and they want some tips here or there and they want to maybe feel good or bad about, oh, well, I'm disabled and so forth and so on. And that's okay. They have a right to feel that way and do that to support the kind of life that they want to live. But then there are those people who stutter who are like, they accept themselves, but they're like, you know what? I want better. I want to be free. I want to do something different. And those are the people that we're speaking to now. So if you're watching this and you think this is just a big sales marathon and, and we're trying to get you to buy some, we're doing this because we want to give you hope. Those of you who actually want to be able to say what you want to say and be who you want to be, doesn't matter how severe or how long you've been stuttering or stammering, you don't have to. Like you just don't have to. So we wanted to make sure that that's really, really clear. Um, if you have, if you guys have anything to add to that, feel free. I'm going to go on to another question um, from Saeed. Saeed is in, in fact, I think Saeed, you are the one that sent us that video that I'm actually going to be putting out. So it says, hey, Julius, while, while in the private coaching program, did you keep focusing on modeling or were you focusing on the individual speaking skills as well from time to time? So there's the proactive speaking skills, inflecting, extending, blending, articulating, body language, all those things, emphasizing, maintaining airflow. <laughs> so there's all those speaking skills. And then there's the modeling where you're using all those skills. So his question is, did you just focus on modeling or did you from time to time focus on any individual skills? 
Great question. Thank you uh, for whoever asked it. Um, so in the beginning, I was focusing on both, mainly skills and the techniques, just to get them down pat. You know, I was still doing the modeling, but I wasn't used to it. I, it was foreign territory, but I was still trying to do it. In the meantime, I was focusing on the skills and the techniques first, not for, but more focused on those. And when I got more used to modeling, because my model, Michael Williams, he uses skills. So once the modeling started clicking, I'm using the techniques while I'm modeling. So it was so much easier to now go full into modeling once I got used to it. You know, because my model used the skills that I was learning first. And so it's like a complementary thing. So definitely took time to get used to modeling. I really had to really focus more and more, listen to more audios, just have his voice constantly be running through my ears and constantly watching and observing him constantly. It's practically observational learning. You know, that's what this is all about. So um, the more I did that, the more I got used to modeling and it just, it kind of started to pop in my head more and more because I would go into speaking situations and try to model and completely forget about it. Now it's, it's there. It's it pops up when I don't really think about it. Um, my model pops in my head, and once I start doing the things that he does, it triggers it. So it just takes time, and it just takes time and practice. Like I said, you just have to keep doing it, listen to more audios, and observe more and more. But yes, in the beginning, I was doing the skills and the techniques just to ease my way into it. You know, ease my way into the program, not overload myself, frustrated. But I think it worked out to, I think my pace worked out for me that way. So. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. We find that, that yeah, it's, it's helpful to do both, to, uh, Focus on the skills and what we find using the 80-20 rule, there's going to be one or two skills that help you the most. Uh, but you can currently focus on the modeling because the modeling is holistic and gives you all the skills. So you're working on the modeling, sometimes not even knowing that you're learning all these other skills. Then we find the one or two skills for you to focus on in every conversation. Then we come back into the modeling where you put everything together. Now, sometimes you want to sharpen up some things. So you might go out and say, hey, I want to work on my articulation. I want to work on finishing my words or I want to work on body language. Perfectly fine. Remember, this is about you becoming an excellent speaker. So you can always go back and revisit those skills. So great question. Great answer. Thank you. Let's jump down to another question here. Um, how long did it take you to get rid of your fears and the mind no longer was scared of those letters? of you blocking. So boom, uh, we've got those words or letters that you say, oh, every time I say this, for some people it's their name, for some people it's numbers. How long does it take you before uh, it's, it's no longer a big deal for you, right? Now, there are still some times where probably all of us anticipate you see something coming and you just get this feeling, ooh, that's not going to flow out. But your whole reaction and the way you deal with it is totally different now than it used to be. So say a little bit about that, Julius, and maybe even Sakshi, if if you can put it a time frame to this. How long did it, does it, is it taking you before the, the, the fear is like, oh, man, there it is. I can't say it. And then boom. Uh, yes, I think it's just it comes down to that person, you know, uh, some people faster than others, some people just longer than others. I am a couple months in, uh, almost three months, three solid months. And yeah, I still anticipate words The W's still get me. You know, I could I could still say the W's uh, I have struggled with. But what Michael says is now the way I think about it. 
is changing. That's the goal is to change how I think about it. When I get to my W's and I have trouble with it, yeah, I still feel, you know, some bit of nervousness and fear and whatnot happens, you know, but how I deal with it now, that's the more important thing. Where I used to get stuck and say, oh my God, I'm stuck. Oh no, the world's coming down. You know, I suck at this. I can't talk. Why am I even doing this? To like, okay, you got stuck. It's all right. Use the tools that you know. You can get out of it and go forward. You know, and I think over time, like, as, you know, because the goal is to get to authenticity. So I, so I think over time for me, I just need more, more months, more of this to reach that place where I'm not even thinking about fearing words or anticipating or being nervous about it. For me, this is what I could say about myself is I will get there. I know I will, you know, but I definitely see difference in my mindset now to when I, you know, first spoke to Michael because that first orientation, there was fear everywhere. And I'm sure you guys can see it in that video. So, yeah, I hope I answered that question. <laughs> right, right, right. Very good. Very good. And here's a question. How long did it take your note? No longer skip. Sakshi, did you have anything to add to this one? Yeah, I'd just like to add that for me, it took me about a week to start believing that I can speak when I want to. Like, honestly, it just took a week. <laughs> but then, of course, the thoughts keep coming back and uh, my reaction time has improved. <laughs> so. Right, right. Very good. Very good. So awesome. I'll take a couple more questions. We're almost at one o'clock. Um, what do you do in the moment when you feel the words won't come out? So it's very much related to the last question, but let's zero in. Boom. For example, we're all talking right now. And let's just say you anticipate a word, doesn't feel like it's going to come out. What do you do in this moment right now? Let's start with. Um, I immediately. Yeah, go ahead, Julius. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. It's just no. <laughs> um, I would immediately tell myself, it's okay, everything's good, life is good, just relax, stay calm. In that immediate instant, I'm going to say, because the one thing I need to hear is positive self-talk at that moment. Just tell myself positive things, life is good, restart, go back backwards, go through it. You use those skills and the modeling that you, you know how to do, just go through it, you know? And it's not about that moment, but you keep doing that every single time. You know, it's about consistency, so. Exactly. Very good. Uh, Sakshi? Yeah, for me, um, I usually just pause and just self-talk. The same thing as Julius. I talk to myself, that really helps me. And what to tell myself is all in the program, like what uh, affirmations to tell yourself. And and for each person, it may be different, like what may uh, help me speak better, maybe something else, and what will help you speak better will be something else. But um, yeah, so it's different for different people, but for me, it's usually pausing and talking to myself. Exactly. Now, a couple things about that. You may be thinking in the moment, I can't talk to myself. It's not true because you're already doing it. You're in the moment. People are thinking all kinds of things. They're thinking, I can't say this word. Or they're thinking, oh, what if I can't say this word? Uh, am I going to embarrass myself? What are other people going to think? So we have all kinds of thoughts and impressions while we are speaking, right? One of the one of the levels that you that you will get to is where your mind feels like it's almost empty, but you're saying exactly what you want to say. You're not even thinking about speak. Like right now, I'm not thinking about speaking. I'm there. I have an intention to communicate a certain message, certain ideas, but I'm not thinking about how I'm saying it. I'm not thinking about what you're thinking about me. I'm just thinking about how I want to impact you, the value that I want to have. We call this Vic and Rick, the value that I want to have 
the impact, and that, I'm, that I want to do it and say it as clearly as possible. So you get to a level where you're flowing. Just remember that word, Julia and Sakri kind of uh, address this in one way or another. It's about creating that flow. So if you're speaking and a word doesn't want to come out, you're going to have tools that you can access to keep the flow going, right? And you'll learn those tools. These are tools you can pull out and use in the moment and put them back. But to keep the flow going, not like a wall, water, and even if it's in a dam, it's still moving around, right? But water just doesn't stop. If you see it in a river, you see it on the ocean, it's moving. It's going to go around. It's going to go over. It's going to go under. It might go up and come back and come back again. But water is going to flow. As the flow has a rhythm to it. So should your speech. Get that image in your mind. So when you're speaking, you don't go, Err. okay, I'm stuck. I can't say anything. No, you find a way, and we give you the tools to keep your speech flowing. The other thing, if I want to rewind back, Julius mentioned visualization. I uh, had a guy who's PhD, and he used visualization to transform his speech. He had lots of speeches and presentations that he had to do, and he would visualize all the time. And he said it was amazing. And he did an amazing job. So visualization, we also have something called virtualization that I'll be sharing more and more that I am sharing with my coaching client. <clears throat> and it's basically where you speak into existence what you want. That may sound a little woo woo, but it's really not. You're just describing a scene as if it already happened. And when you verbally, audibly describe it, you also visualize it and you feel it. It's a very, very powerful technique that we're using in Pro90D. So, okay, good. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else pressing. Okay. Um, all right. So here, yeah, let me just put this one up. I've been a starter for 10 years and I can say it by experience that these two have never, never, ever stuttered. <laughs> <laughs> Stuttering doesn't go. It's permanent. Pro90D, I followed all of your videos, but none worked. Okay. So um, we want to take this seriously because we do have people who leave comments. <laughs> They'll just say, okay, yes, Michael. Exactly. So, I mean, I had a They'll say, Michael, you never stuttered. Um, and even, even watching uh, Julius's video, they may think that he's a fraud or something. And there's nothing that we can do about that. But Julia and Sakshi, what comments do you have to this gentleman who feels as though uh, you never stuttered, Sakshi, you never stuttered, I never stuttered, and that it's permanent and that this guy's been following all of my videos? I doubt that. Maybe he's been watching my videos, right? There are a lot of YouTube watchers. They watch the videos, but unless you've worked with me personally or you've done the course and you've stuck to it, then you can't really say you tried it. And even, even we have people who do coaching or do self-study, but they don't do everything. And it's all doable, right? This is nothing where you're going to be doing something for eight hours a day. It's all perfectly doable. But some people will leave out the modeling and just listen to the audio. Maybe they do the affirmations but they don't do the self-talk. So if you're not doing the whole system, then you can't say that you did it. So Julius Soxy, what do you say to this gentleman? I'm sure he feels quite frustrated that he's been trying, but anyway, I'll shut up. So go ahead. Okay, I can go first. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I would just say, uh, Ibrahim, I did stutter. I did stutter and I still stutter sometimes. So um, it's just I now know a way of dealing with it and being able to sp uh, speak smoothly through the Pro90D yes. program. Yes. That's all I have and to I say. And that's the truth. Like I cannot stress this enough. And uh, yeah, and stuttering doesn't go. I Like I would just say that um, like we have been talking about it, it's a habit. It's the style that we have been speaking for a very long time. And just like we change other things in, uh, in our life, we change the way we speak through the program. 
and like michael said it takes a lot of effort and not just watching videos will not change it um i think we need to follow the system to the t to be able to see changes so i understand that you may be feeling very frustrated that you've been struggling with this for 10 years and you feel like there's no way to get out but uh if you really believe in it like i would still say even if you think that right now you're like given up but i would just encourage you to give it one more try and like purchase the program and see it for yourself i i don't maybe you haven't done the program properly so maybe that's why you're saying and to the point that you said we never started i i do i mean i'm saying i do michael has not paid me any money to lie <laughs> please like i mean that's all i have to say okay thank you sachs a uh, julius yes sir uh actually find this as a compliment <laughs> you know cuz <laughs> it's uh you know since it's such a big you know change in my life you know it's a compliment but yes I definitely understand the frustration, uh, Ibrahim. You know, I've gone through years thinking this is not gonna. There's no um, way out of this. You know, I actually have a video of myself in, I think like the fifth grade or something or seventh, where I'm, I'm at, uh, I'm in school and I'm being filmed doing this uh, introduction and I'm stuttering and I'm just all over the place as a kid. You know, and I've dealt with that for the rest of my life, you know, and up to when I was 29 years old doing the audition with Michael, that same person you saw in the video was the same child, same way I spoke, same way I acted and everything, you know, and now me doing this, this, this right here, this webinar is blowing my mind, okay, because I've never done this before. This is the one big challenge ever since I started this Pro 90 Day. I am mind blown on how i am talking right now you have no idea i'm gonna show this to my mom and she might just cry all day because of you know she won't even recognize me or my family so um i do get the frustration or the unbelievable aspect of all this i'm not getting paid to fake anything i don't see there's any reason to do that you know there's no reason to fake anything uh like this i have no time to do that but uh, uh, yeah, and the only way to do it is I was there. I said, "There's no way this is gonna work. No way, no way." These all, all these testimonials. I don't know. Took a leap of faith. I took, took a leap of faith. I did it, and I'm gonna continue doing it. Now I see. Now I see it's helping me. I'm nowhere near where I want to be because I still stutter. I still stammer. Get blocked. I still get stuck. You know, but. It is what it is. I got to keep going with it, you know? So it definitely works, you know? I know it. Sakshi is a living proof. I'm a living proof. And Williams is a living proof. So, yeah, man, I hope you, uh, you know, find something you want to do and stick to with it, man. So. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to make make another comment, and, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. This is Juan. Uh, we worked with Juan a while back, and um, we've got so many other people who e either worked on their own or worked with me, and their stuttering was real. And like all of us would tell you that, you know, technically speaking, there are still times where we stutter or stammer or block. Technically speaking, we don't use those words, and we don't identify ourselves that way, and we don't respond and react to it that way. So, and here's what I mean by that, every single person has disfluencies. Every single person is disfluent. I don't care how good of a speaker you are, there are going to be times where you are disfluent. You may have never started before. There will be times when you're disfluent. And my clients are now able to look at the people around them and observe and see, oh, wow, this person is not as fluent as I thought they were. This person's stumbling over their speech. They're repeating stuff. They're using lots of filler words. They're actually not that good of a speaker. I actually speak a little better, right? My clients will actually start to say that. So uh, while stuttering could be genetic, it is neurological. We're not just saying it's 
just a habit. A habit is also neurological, right? So it can be biological, neurobiological, neurological. We're not saying it's not real. What we're saying is that you can replace it. There are people who've had strokes. That's real. They lose their capacity to walk and speak. And through therapy, they learn how to speak again, or walk again. So this is something that's real, and you can replace it with a new way of speaking and thinking. Um, and here's one, you know, again, he just, I've been struggling for 30 years, finally discovered habit with the program. I've been able to overcome the habit. So it really does work. I'm glad you actually posted that because <laughs> um, it allows us just to address the fact that this is something that you guys can have hope to overcome. But if you're just, let me be clear, let us all be clear. If you're just watching YouTube videos, you, you might, I mean, I've had people say I've gotten great results, but don't necessarily expect to get the full effect, the full transformation just by watching videos. If you join the self-study and you just watch videos or listen to audio, or do affirmations, don't expect to get the full effect. It's a holistic system and process. If you want the full transformation, you have to immerse yourself. And real quickly, what do I mean by immerse yourself? Right now, you have a dominant way of thinking, you have a way of seeing yourself, and you have a dominant way of speaking. This is the way you speak right now. You can't expect to do something part-time to replace what you've been doing full-time. You've got to literally immerse yourself, immerse your way of your current way of thinking, your current identity, your current way of speaking. You got to flood it out with this new way, which means you have to totally jump in and start trying to do this, to think this, to practice this all the time. Because if you don't, your dominant way is going to take over. It's going to stay there. So this isn't something you can do part time got to do it full time. And that's one of the number one reasons why people, even when they're watching me or, you know, or even taking the program, if they don't transform, it's because they haven't immersed. Uh, these two guys have immersed themselves. So any last minute comments, Sakshi, I'll go to you and then Julius and, and then Julius and I actually have a meeting right now. So, so we'll pop into our meeting. But Sakshi, last minute comments. Yeah, I'm just so glad that I could join today. And the questions were so great. Uh, and Julius, what you shared with us was so great. Thank you so much for, for your time today. Thank you, Sachi. Julius. Yes, uh, I would like to uh, um, thank everyone as well, everyone who is watching us and everybody from the group who is watching and all the new people. Um, Thank you for taking the time to watch, and I want Sakshi as well. You are an inspiration to us all. Thank you for being here with me and um, doing this webinar. And most of all, thank you, Mr. Williams, for making this all happen. And uh, thank you for everything that you're doing and continue doing for all of us. So, yes. Thank you, Julius. So, guys, if, you, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look in the description of this video. It'll be in the live tab as well as we're going to put it in a regular YouTube channel. In the description, you'll see two links. Make a decision. Take a step. Join the self-study. You also become a part of the community where you can practice. You can see all of these people in there encouraging you. You can ask all kinds of questions. That link is also displayed on the screen right here. Right, You can get the self-study and the community. Second thing, for those of you who are professionals, you want to accelerate the progress by 10 times or more, you're going to want to work with either myself or Sakshi one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's what Julius has done. Sakshi's done both the self-study and private coaching, and now she's a coach. So if you want to accelerate, then you're going to want to book an assessment session with me, a private conversation. And you can see that link here, but I'm also going to post it in the description. So the longer you wait, 
the longer it's going to take, the longer you're going to feel trapped, uh, the harder it's going to be to change. Right. So do something right now that's going to transform your speech. And like Julius, you know, in two to three months, even if it takes six months, your life can be totally different. People will be saying, man, you never stuttered. Man, you're lying. You're faking. That's that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> people, people will tell you that. That'll be a compliment. Okay. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll see you all the next time.